Hi, my name is Jeff Wolf, and today we're going to talk about the importance of anatomy. I really think that it all starts with uh, knowledge of anatomy uh, to get your sculptures absolutely correct. Without the correct anatomy, it's really hard to be convincing with the movement of your work. I designed this and sculpted this uh, anatomy study of a horse, which can be used basically for uh, any four-legged animal. Um, the, the muscle structure is slightly different. Um, <clears throat> there may be less ribs and whatnot, but the, the basic makeup of most uh, uh, grass-eating animals are built the same. So I did this uh, not only for my benefit but for my students' benefits as well. Uh, so I can kind of point out some of the landmarks uh, as we go along. Uh, I'll, I'll introduce the most important things. Uh, to me it's, it's not super important to know the name of each bone but it is super important to know their function. What I'm going to do is point out some of the landmarks, the basic landmarks that you will see uh, and want to bring out in your sculpture. I'm not going to talk about the head too much. I've got another study that uh, shows in more detail and I'll get to that. But uh, for the main body of the horse, the top of the shoulder blade, the point of the shoulder, the elbow, the point of the hip, the pin of the hip, or the hook, and the, the joint of the hind leg. These are all real prominent landmarks. Even the, the joint going into the sacrum uh, is, is uh, very important. I'm going to turn the study around now, and I'll show you these uh, landmarks on the muscle side of this study. Now you can see, as I pointed out, this line across the top of the shoulder, the point of the shoulder, the elbow, the top of the hip, the joint into the sacrum and or the pelvis and the pin. Also, this joint on the uh, stifle area. Other landmarks, and, and these are the things that really need to show strongly in your, in your sculpture as far as I'm concerned, is the hardness of these joints. They really have to reflect the, the hardness and soundness of that bone. So, I try to sculpt the joint and just texture over the, the actual joint and that gives me that hardness that I'm looking for. The rib cage is another uh, important uh, landmark. You'll always see the edge of the, the rib cage and it'll be indicated mainly by shadow. Um, we can get into the muscle masses as well. And, and what I do, and I'll, I'll explain this a little more when we get to the horse head, but there's basic muscle masses. The, these masses, I try to teach my students to look at as like parts of a puzzle. And so once you understand these, then you can shape your clay and lay it right on top of your armature. I think that kind of explains the basic concept behind this anatomy study. Even today, I use this anatomy study, and I've been sculpting professionally now for over 25 years, and it still is a main part of my daily work. I'm going to explain a little bit about movement and the problems that I see in a, uh, a number of sculptures when I walk into a gallery that isn't correct. And I'm going to use this 
sculpture form that I developed. I, I really hate making armatures. It takes a lot of time and, and designing, and then you've got a lot of wire and whatnot through it. So I developed this foam body that can be cut, moved, um, and, and it's quick. You uh, screw a, a nipple into it, put a floor flange in it, put your wires on, and I use the least amount of wire as I can. It's just easier for the foundry and it's easier for me to move around. And you're ready to sculpt. So some of the areas that I'm going to point out, I'll start with the neck and head. The atlas only allows the horse's head to move up and down. A horse's head will not turn right or left from this point forward. Uh, to get the right and left movement, the whole uh, neck vertebrae have to move. So. With this, I'm just going to demonstrate with the wire. If, you, if your animal is looking to the left, it has to start from the base of the neck and turn all the way around. If the animal's head's going down, then of course it's rotating off the atlas. Another thing that I, I notice quite often is like in uh, and deer that are jumping or horses that are bucking. When this shoulder moves, or even if a, uh, an animal is walking, it has to move from this point all the way through. I see a lot of times that the legs will end up bending like that and the shoulder remains in, in, in a stationary position which is not physically possible. So, if this animal is going to move forward and, and say it's uh, really reaching out like a racehorse, this uh, joint, this bone, has to straighten as the shoulder blade comes forward, which allows the leg to move forward in that straight position. It can never remain back and bent like that. Now the other thing I see uh, quite often, and I'll move this over, bring this up a little bit, and for some reason elk sculpture is probably the most common that I see this uh, mistake made. But in the, the back leg, I always see the hawk bent forward like this for forward movement, which is physically impossible or, or unnatural. If a, if a farrier is shoeing a horse, he'll pick that leg up and, uh, and work on that hoof using this motion. But naturally, it cannot happen. So the, the correct movement is again starting up here in this joint and it moves forward which allows this leg to move forward. This bends very slightly in this movement as you can tell. The, the further forward the horse moves and the further or this leg moves and the further that leg will extend and, and bend. And of course this one will do the same. So with these uh, foam armatures and the, and the wire, I can get this animal in the position that I want it to be in before I ever start uh, sculpting. So it doesn't matter if, if this animal is, is jumping, then uh, I, I can position my my legs in the correct position before I ever start. So those are a, a few of the, the common things that I see, common mistakes that I see in the movement of, of animals. The other uh, movement it, to understand is just like a human figure, an animal has a breastbone. 
and from this point to this point that that rib cage is quite stationary so it doesn't move a whole bunch there is some flexibility to the ribs um, and it can move up and down slightly uh, you know like an animal that is uh, in a bucking horse or a, a bull you'll see this arc slightly but the main movement you get is from here to here and then again into the neck. Uh, the rest of this stays stationary. It, it cannot move. Uh, it can twist and rotate up and down with the pelvis. But this has got to remain the same. So, when this animal moves and this leg, this leg goes forward and this leg comes back, it'll cause this hit to uh, raise on the left side and will slightly lower on the right side. When the right leg comes forward, it's just the opposite reaction. So you want to have this movement as well and it will also relate to the front uh, exactly the same way. Uh, if you watch somebody walking you'll see their hips and shoulders rotate at a different angle, up and down, right and left. And so these are some things that uh, I think, personal opinion, is very important when you're, when you're starting out sculpting or even as a professional. You, you've got to understand those principles and, and the importance of that anatomy. Now in closing, I'd like to mention that the study casts are for sale. Uh, you can find them on the Western Art Rodeo Association website at www.westernartrodeoassociation.com, all lowercase, and go to the, to the store, and, and they're in there. Uh, it's cast in, in a urethane resin, and it's something that I feel every studio should have. 